Hi everyone, welcome to week three of the Pastel Series with Strathmore. My name is Amy Pierce Stone from Her Art from the Attic. This week we're going to continue on with our pastels, but we're going to switch to soft pastels instead of oil pastels. And we are going to create this beautiful sunset over a lake scene. And so let's get going. Get out your pastels, get out your paper, and let's have fun. Okay, let's talk about the importance of your paper choice. Paper choice is just as important as your pastel choice. You need to get good quality of both of these things. High quality professional paper, high quality professional pastels. If you don't, the pastels will not work nicely. Either way, I'm gonna go with Strathmore's grayscale paper. And I'm wanting to show you that you can use other papers than just the ones that say pastel. I mean, you can use those too, but don't limit yourself. So last week we used Strathmore's Artigan paper, which is really smooth. We use coal black to get a really bright contrast. This week I'm gonna to go to the opposite end of the spectrum, show you what happens when you use textured paper to add to your pastel creation. I'm also going to use bright white. We're just gonna go completely opposite. You can use a variety of different colors. With the landscape that we're going to do today, I suggest that you use a more neutral tone, earth tones, with your landscapes. But again, feel totally free to experiment. Try to get a paper that has a nice contrasting color with some of the colors that you're using in your piece, and it will help it pop. Color of your paper matters, texture of your paper matters, quality of your paper matters. That's why I am totally okay using Strathmore paper and joining up with them this month, because I believe in their papers. They know how to make paper, people. They are the paper people. I used to be in the group of people that hated pastels. I thought they were a glorified crayon. Why would I use them? Until I had the opportunity to experience, and I use that word very purposefully, experience high quality pastels. Pastels that are not filled with the junk that make cheap pastels cheap. These soft pastels, I won't use any other brand, I love them. They are called Unison Color Pastels. They are handmade, hand mixed, hand rolled from a little family in England. And they have the best quality ingredients in them. And when you use them on your paper, how do I describe this for you? I got it, close your eyes. Okay, imagine your grandma pulls out this just warm, fresh loaf of bread out of the oven, cuts you a slice. You dip your knife into the saucer of soft butter and spread it on your bread. That is how your pastels should feel going onto the paper. They should just glide on there, emotionally too. It should just feel good. It looks good, it feels good. Don't eat it, please. <laughs> they will also be extremely rich in their pigment. So they may cost more, but you actually don't need to use as much, so they're better. Which brings me to the first step, and that is figuring out which colors we're gonna use. Now on the left-hand side, I have a reference photo. If you have a reference photo and you're wanting to get the colors to match pretty well, then start testing the colors either on a separate piece of paper with the colors already there like I have or right on top of the picture. I put the colors separate so that you could see them a little bit better. Um, so I am just figuring out from this box set which colors I need. Now the box set I am using is specifically designed by Unison Color for landscapes. And I love this because they have nailed down the most useful colors in nature. Now the, the reference photo that I'm using is a little bit saturated in the editing, which is really beautiful, um, but it's making it hard to find some of the colors exactly, and that's okay because I'm just gonna find the colors that I find closest to the colors in the photo, and trusting that 
it will look natural by the end. Some of the pastels can be mixed right on the page, right on the artwork as you're doing them. But test them beforehand and find which colors you're going to use first. Let's start laying down some color. I'm going to start on my skyline, and you can see that I've sketched out some rough lines. Um, it's basically just an X in my page with a line through the middle of the X for where the horizon is. But this will give me perspective. I'm going to lay down some dark purple because it kind of goes purple to blue to yellow, which fades it a little bit to green, and then shades of blue that go from light to dark up. But I'm going to start with my darker hues, and then I'm going to add my lighter ones on top of it. And I am just gently rubbing, barely touching the paper and figuring out where I don't want them to intersect with the clouds. And I'm keeping in mind that I can always layer and layer and layer more. But I want there to be a punch in the contrast. So I'm going to start laying down some more colors. I'm taking some purple. Now I'm going to take a little bit of red and this is going to transition me into the warmer colors and I'm going to be really careful as I'm adding down some of the yellow and putting some of the lighter ones and darker ones oranges and yellows and lighter yellows around it careful not to blend them with the blue and purple or else those colors will get muddy this is where it can get a little bit tricky when you are using warm and cool colors right together so I'm adding a tiny bit of white to brighten up those clouds and brighten up the purple underneath, but I'm not doing all my blending yet. I'm going to save that for a little bit later. Now I'm adding a little bit of dark around the clouds and I, that's going to be orange. That's going to transition into the lighter yellow around the clouds and that the it actually is a bit of a beige color and a light cream color with a little bit of yellow around the clouds. And then it will go into the lighter blues. Put some down, put some above it, and then it goes darker and darker as you go up. And you kind of see how right above the clouds it looks a little green. And that's because of the yellow and blue mixing a little bit. So I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can blend. I've got my tortillion or my blending stump and you can use this to scrub or not to scrub to blend and you just push the colors into each other I typically like to start with my lighter color and push it into the dark because with the softer pastels it's really easy for the dark colors to take over uh, because the, the 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 pastels are very I mean they are very soft so you just got to be aware. Again, if you're not sure how they'll blend, do it on test paper. And now I'm so carefully bringing that down into the yellow. I don't want it to look super green. So I'm barely, barely touching those two colors together, the blue and that yellowy, creamy color. Then pushing it around the sides where it's a little darker, like there's a vignette which can look a little greener on the sides maybe. And then I'll pull that darkness that's on the stump around the clouds to make those clouds pop out a little bit more. Pull that down into the purple, but not too much. I don't want too much yellow in the purple, but I do want a little bit so that those colors blend. Then I'm just gonna grab a few more colors and touch up here and there and just keep layering all the colors, layer, layer, layer. Now, with soft pastels, you can continue to layer. It's a little bit hard to scrape off unwanted pastel like you can with oil pastels, but if you layer it enough, then you can cover up things that you didn't want or add more brightness or more depth, more darkness, more lines, whatever you want. Um, so you just keep adding colors, keep blending, keep experimenting, keep testing. Now I'm going to lay down the line of the trees. This, I want it to be more of a silhouette, but I'm going to start with this really deep olive green, add some sage green, some kind of lime green, and some yellows, and then I'm like, oh, I need the clouds to have a little bit more pop, so I'm putting some red around the edges, which ended up being a little too dark. So you can see I just go through and I compensate, and I'm not 
worrying a lot about the reference photo. I'm using that as just a reference. I'm not needing it to be super exact. That's one of the reasons I chose a sunset with clouds because they're very forgiving. If it doesn't look exactly like the picture, it can still look really beautiful. Okay, so we're doing the water and it's basically a mirror image of the sky uh, elongated. And the, the bottom is a lot darker blue than the top, but Basically, you just mirror it, right? And I'm leaving the dock for last. Um, but I'm just, again, layer, 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 adding colors. The same ones that I put in the top, I'm doing it in the bottom. So, and I'm not wearing too much because I know that the ripples in the water will change the reflection just a little bit. Now, watch this check out I am barely touching this and it is blending like magic I can't even believe this is my favorite part look at that I I seriously I'm barely touching this this is how you know you have a good soft pastel and this is also you see I'm using my fingers and not the stump I prefer with oil pastels and soft pastels, but mostly oils to use my fingers. Why? Because I feel like I have a little bit more control with my fingers. Also, I can, I have 10 blending stumps to work with. So I, because I don't want to rub all the blue into the yellow, I'm going to rub the blue with one finger, go up, then switch fingers. See how they're all different colors on my fingers. That's because I go between the different fingers to blend and now you can see okay you got a good feel of how a blending stump would blend this guy now I'm gonna rub it with my fingers because I want it a little more smooth I'll leave the clouds a little rough they're big burly cumulus clouds and let's just leave them there cumulus right where's my first grader who's always telling me what clouds are what um, I was just blowing some of the dust from the soft pastels away. That's my preferred way of getting rid of them. You've got to be careful because it can blend with other colors. So if I blow them off my page, then I'm going to blow them toward the edge or, or try to make sure that they don't blow into a color I don't want them mixing with. Uh, that can be a tricky part because you don't want it you don't want to brush them off or smear them off because it can really mess with other colors and the soft pastels are so delicate. Sometimes I use a blush brush like for your face um, but that's a lot better to use with oil pastels. It's really you gotta be so delicate with these because where they blend so smoothly and easily sometimes they blend too easily with the colors you don't want, but you'll get the feel of it. You just practice, practice, practice. Now, I, now I'm really taking my time here because I don't want that yellow to muddy with the blue. I want it to fade. We've almost got this rainbow, right? These rainbow colors. One other thing to keep in mind is that you want to have water with you that you can continually wash the pastels off of your fingers so they don't get into the colors you don't want. So when I just disappeared, I was washing my fingers so that they could be clean to blend the other colors. So I, by the end of this project, I had a giant grocery bag just full of dirty paper towels that I had used to clean my fingers throughout the entire process. See that? There it is, folks. Cleaning off my fingers. Now I'll just speed it up. And then I just, I blend, I layer, I blend, I layer. One thing that the little stump is better for are the fine details or if you don't want things to look so smooth. So if I want the rough edge of the trees and the shrubs and that horizon line to to look a little rough then I can dab it with my stump and it will leave a little bit of the details or add a little chunk in there same with the clouds so just keep that in mind now as you're watching see if your eye can pick up 
the marriage between the soft pastel and the texture of the paper. If you look closely, you can see the little specks of white from the paper showing through the pastels. And this is caused by the texture of the paper. Now, this can add a lot of character to your piece, especially when you step back and gain a perspective that's further back than being nose to nose with what you're creating. So every once in a while, step back and look what you're doing and see how the texture adds to it. Because you may be creating your piece and thinking, ah, I got to make all this texture disappear. But you got to be careful with that because you could actually be taking away some of the character of your piece. So you just, you got to decide what you like and what you don't like. If the texture you decide is too much and you'd rather have it smooth, you know, because it's kind of glassy water and, and a clear sky, then you might want to use the Artigan paper or smoother texture paper. But really experiment, step back, look close, see how it all works together. Now let's start laying down the foundation of the dock. I'm going to use some dark blue and some grays. And you got to keep in mind that some of the sky and even the clouds and the sunset is reflected on the dock. There's some metal on the dock. So if you want to let that shine through, then add some of the colors as the highlights. So I'm laying down darker colors first, the darker blues, the darker grays and greens. And then I will add the lighter browns and even light green. And that same, remember the middle color in the sky that was, that was kind of a beige? Um, you can add that. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to create every single little line, but I'm going to do chunky textures. Not everything will be smooth. I want it to look like old rack, rickety wood. I'm going to leave out the handles at the end because I kind of like the idea that you've got this dock that leads you to somewhere and nowhere at the same time. And there's no safety on either side. It's just, but there's, it's beautiful, but it's also a little eerie, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's not eerie, but what does it mean to you? Why did you, same technique as before, you layer, you blend, you layer, you blend, you add all the colors you want, you, you step back every once in a while to gain a different perspective because sometimes you don't need to add anything else. It's where you want it to be, and that's when you stop. When you reach that point, you carefully take the tape off, look at what you've done, congratulate yourself for not giving up and to seeing it through. Don't look at the imperfections and get hung up on anything. Just enjoy it and then do it again. Guys, thank you so much for joining me this week. Next week, we're going to do another soft pastel lesson. We're going to do a portrait. So I hope you'll join us for that. Thanks, guys. Bye.